So last year at RSNA, I first ran across this ultra-fast Doppler, and literally twice in my life, I've been an ultrasound over 30 years, have I been this excited. The first was color Doppler. Um, and then I've been fortunate enough over the years to, to hear Peter Byrne speak many times and then say to me, again, his love for Doppler, because I think Doppler is just incredible. So when last year I was pulled over by my friend Frank to say, you got to see this, I, it was just amazing. How can they, it's like magic. Um, so in May, we actually opened up a new hospital, Hopkins, which is incredible, ultrasound. We have windows. It's great. And Dan brought the system by so that we could start looking at it. And then, unfortunately, due to Hurricane Sandy, there was a major delay in us getting the units. So I've only had it a couple of weeks. So the first thing I had to do was I, the doubting Thomas, I mean, I had, to, I had to make sure it really did what it said it did. So I just, nothing very scientific. I threw, threw my sonographers on the table, and I scanned their carotids, and I scanned their portal vein with other equipment that we had, the Philips IU-22 and the GE Logic E9, and made sure that the numbers worked, and they did. So I was very, very excited that uh, what the machine said it did, it could do, because like, obviously those numbers are crucial in our diagnosis. So we, we took a look again at the carotids and portal veins, and it was about four centimeter difference over the spectrum of, of all the images and about one centimeter in the venous system. And of course, that could have been due to angle correction, uh, some hemodynamics, you know, just over, over the course of all the signals. But as important as Doppler is, I had to make sure the grayscale also was very good, uh, which it is. So it, it, it's got some great, beautiful B scan images as we've been seeing. Looked at their color sensitivity, I had to make sure that it equaled what I had uh, with my other units, because you know, what, what good is this exciting new technology if the current standard technology is weak? And it just we got to see some beautiful renal arteries here off the system. I really like their DCPI. Uh, it's just some really beautiful color Doppler. It stays inside the boundaries. It's very good spatial resolution. Uh, very nice as it sort of like blends into the image. And then here's a nice example of the portal vein with a nice Doppler signal and that, that DCPI Doppler. Again, just a normal color Doppler signal of the common carotid artery. Again, nice Doppler spectral system. So I'm not going to tell you how this works uh, because that's, you know, to me, the engineers may like to know how it works, but I want to know what to do with it, as probably most of you in this audience want to know what to do with it. But here in a nutshell is how it works. It's just, it's amazing. You put the transducer in the vessel, in three seconds, it's done, and it's doing all these calculations. Um, and then you can take your spectral volume, and you can, well, you put the transducer down, and you can take that spectral volume, and you can put it anywhere in that vessel you like. You can angle correct. You can adjust the baseline. You can turn your gain up and down. It's like you're actually scanning, and, and it's just mind-boggling how they do this, but it, it works. And as a sonographer, it's very exciting. Again, here's some examples. Uh, here we've got the, again, I like the fact that we can do some nice comparison instead of having to take two separate images. So here we have our portal vein and a hepatic artery just demonstrating they're flowing in the same direction. Here in a kidney, we've got sort of upper, mid, lower pole intrarenal signals. Again, we use that a lot for our, our renal stenosis patients. Easy things like looking at the internal and external carotid arteries. Again, instead of having two pictures, I could show my radiologist in one picture. Here's the external, here's the internal, and as I work them up, they know which vessel I'm in, and it's very easy and quick. Again, one thing we always worry about, did I get the highest velocity? So we can take the spectrum and we can just walk through and do numerous points along the path uh, and grab different signals using the, the color map as a guide. Um, here we've got this quad view, we've got the, um, the sort of the clip of the signals, and we have the mean velocity over here, a peak systolic frame, and then the maximum velocity frame. So I can pick one of those frames to, to guide my spectral Doppler. So again, I can pick the maximum velocities and make sure I get a, a velocity from this point here. Or look at the uniformity through the peak systolic frame. So here's the patient, it's a mild ICA stenosis, but when you look at it with the grayscale, you know how misleading grayscale can be. So as the radiologist, 
or the interpreter, you look at the gray scale and say, wow, that looks like a 50% stenosis, and then you get a Doppler signal that doesn't really support that. So then they always wonder, did you get the highest signal? And let me tell you as a sonographer, there's nothing worse than questioning my, my scan. So, but I put on my cheerful face and I go back and I prove that I was right. But when you've got new staff or students, you, you don't have that trust built in yet and you have to have that seed of doubt, well, did they really get the highest velocity? But the cool part is I don't have to scan the patient again. I pull up that volume and I can just look through and just find and make sure that I did get that highest velocity. The doctor can be in the room, the patient can be gone, I don't have to tie up the room. So again, when we have new hires and we're trying to gauge their, their degree of proficiency, their knowledge, are they scanning properly with students? So I want to check the work. And the patient's like this, because you know, when you put the probe back on the patient, the patient thinks that person didn't know what they were doing. So they're a little upset. But if I just pull up the image and do some manipulation, which they usually can't see, then they're okay. So the, the patient's satisfaction actually is a little bit more improved with the ultrafast Doppler. And then I can do my thing, I can remeasure, I can make sure they did get the highest velocity, again, which helps support that they do know what they're doing, that they're good sonographers. Uh, and, and again, start building that trust relationship that's so critical between the sonographer and the physician. So the nice part, again, I can bring up that quad view. I can look as to which of the color images I want to use. Typically, it was the peak systolic one. I can measure with my spectral Doppler. I can increase or decrease the gain. I can change the sample volume size. I can change the scale size. It's again like I'm actually scanning. So here we've got getting some various signals throughout this internal carotid artery with the measurements. So my initial thoughts, you know, obviously this is gonna save on scanning time. So I get the patient in, I can do just a couple acquisitions of the areas of interest. I can get the patient out, let them relax, go back to the room, go to their other tests they may have to do, and do all of my Doppler information then. I can bring the radiologist in if they have any questions. So it reduces callback. So if the patient has left, so in our institution, if the, the resident or fellow checks the case, and then the attendant comes along and says, well, you know, I'm not really sure. Let's bring the patient back. I don't have to do that anymore. I just, let's go to the room, pull up the volume, and away we go. And I can show the doctor, yes, that it was the highest velocity. Then we can really look at placing that volume in the, in the most accurate place, and it helps reduce the amount of images that we need. So my initial thoughts were great. This is gonna be wonderful for training new staff, my students, but more importantly for my seasoned staff, the portables. Again, because there's nothing that really makes my sonographers really upset is when they come back from doing portables and the doctors question some of their Doppler tracings. So they put on their nice cheerful face and say, I'll go get them again. And they basically slam the door and go grab the machine and stomp by the new department, you know, because they got to go all the way trek over to the patient's room to get everything all set up. But more importantly, it loses face because the patient thinks this person didn't know what they were doing, they're back for more. So now with, for portables, they don't mind going to do portables. They go do them, they grab their volumes and they come back and the doctor has a question, we pull up the volume and we can show them that was the highest velocity or they can even manipulate themselves. So again, it really built some increased confidence in this interpreting physician with their their numbers, with their diagnosis, as well as between the staff. And it offers lots of great teaching opportunities so that I can show my staff, this is where you should have taken it. You know, it looked like maybe here in the black and white, here's where the, the stenosis might have been, but realistically, look at your color and here's where you should have taken it. So again, some of the things we were looking at is again, renal stenosis patients. Again, in one image, being able to look at all three poles, with their Doppler spectrums, looking that they all have nice sharp upstrokes, or if somebody had a tardis parus in the kidney, then we knew we had to go looking closer at that kidney. To track the artery, again, we get a nice color, color picture of that whole artery and just track down. Again, we can do a lot of this stuff while the patient's gone, so we can obtain all this as, as needed. Um, on the banana peel view, the coronal, again, on the same image, I can show my doc both origins. 
We do a lot of renal transplants, so looking at things like the anastomotic sites, especially the artery, because that can be very difficult sometimes, and sometimes the doctor questions our angle correction, so they can go in and say, you know what, I like this angle better. Our, again, our intrarenal signals, again, the main renal artery, if there's kinking, uh, especially that DCPI really showed them very nicely, and looking at post biopsy complications. Livers, again, a lot of anastomotic sites, looking at the hepatic arteries, very important in these patients. Again, we can sort of show the arteries and the portal veins simultaneously. We can show multiple branches through the liver. Again, our liver transplant, same things. Celiac, I, unfortunately I didn't get a case, but I was thinking, you know, with, with the median arcuate syndrome, because a lot of times sonographers will Doppler at the origin, which is not where the highest velocity is. So then they got to go back in and do the study again, basically. But here with the ultra-fast Doppler, we acquire that color picture, and we can go in and do the correct measurements. Carotids, again, walking through that stenosis, it's very important to the doctor so they can really see that we did pick the highest velocity. So we can do a pre- Highest velocity and a post eye turbulence all on one image. It is it's really great. Uh, peripheral vascular, looking at AV fistula. So again, on one image, I can have my, my pre-signal with the, with the low resistance and my arterial signal. Post AV fistula, where the arterial signal is high resistance, and then the turbulent pulsatile venous, all in one picture, all for my physicians. Again, just one picture tells the story. But I think one of the important things as a sonographer that I liked was ergonomics. So that I'm not holding that transducer in awkward positions while I'm doing all of these Doppler things. That I acquire my information, I can rest my body and use good ergonomics on the keyboard. I, again, when you, once you get to a point of, you know, getting all the comfortable with getting the colored Doppler images, you can even just let the patient go and sit down comfortably and acquire all that Doppler information after the patient leaves, if that works for your workflow. So in conclusion, I think this is an incredibly exciting new technology. Um, it's just the beginning. It's, it's not perfect. Colored Doppler wasn't perfect when it first came out. We were one of the first clinical sites in the United States for 3D, and you know, it took like 30 minutes sometimes for those adjustments to happen. And look where we're at now. So again, there's an incredible bright future. I'm very excited about what this technology will do, not only for interpretive, but also for me as a sonographer and some ergonomic issues. So I look forward to seeing this technology evolve. And next RSNA, with, again, it will be better and better than it has been. And look at some future applications. I think with transcranial Doppler, again, will be another great place uh, for this wonderful technology. Merci. Thank you.